MAO inhibitors were the first class of antidepressants to be approved by the FDA and entered the market in the 1950s. When they entered the market, it was not known that tyramine, a chemical found in aged and spoiled foods, may raise blood pressure in patients taking MAO inhibitors. As a result, of the estimated 1.5 million people who received MAO inhibitor treatment from 1960 to 1964, 14 people died, likely due to overconsumption of tyramine. With the emergence of tricyclics and other antidepressants shortly after, the practice of psychiatry shifted away from the use of MAO inhibitors. Since the 1960s, improved food manufacturing processes and increased regulations by the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, have limited the availability of spoiled or aged foods. As a result, tyramine levels have dropped substantially, and now only a few foods contain significant levels of tyramine. Additionally, small doses of drugs like neurotryptyline and disipramine can be combined with the MAO inhibitor to virtually eliminate dietary restrictions, as these drugs prevent tyramine from raising the blood pressure. So what are MAO inhibitors exactly? To understand how this class of medication works, we have to understand a little physiology of the brain. The brain is largely composed of neurons, or messenger cells, and supporting cells. Neurons communicate with each other by sending signals across a physical empty space just a few nanometers long between them. This small space is called a synapse. Let's take a look at the synapse between two neurons. In this figure, cell A is sending a signal to cell B. Cell A releases neurotransmitters or chemical messengers, which then travel across the synapse and bind to receptors on cell B, thereby propagating a signal to cell B. Three of the most well-known neurotransmitters are serotonin, dopamine, and neuroepinephrine. Within a few milliseconds, the neurotransmitters clear out from the synapse, ending the transmission of a signal from cell A to cell B. Most of the transmitters clear out by simply diffusing away or leaving the area due to movement in random directions. A small portion of the neurotransmitters are degraded by enzymes in the synapse or bind to reuptake receptors on cell A and re-enter cell A. Many drugs, including SSRIs, bind to and block these reuptake receptors on cell A. In doing so, however, they only increase the quantity of serotonin in the synapse minimally, as a vast majority of it still leaves by diffusing away or being broken down by enzymes. MAO inhibitors, by contrast, block the enzyme monoamine oxidase, or MAO. MAO is responsible for degrading these neurotransmitters inside and outside of cell A. As a result, these neurotransmitters are released in greater portions and stay in the synapse longer, giving them more time to bind to receptors on cell B. There are two types of MAO enzymes, MAOA and MAOB. MAOA degrades several chemicals including serotonin, dopamine, and neuroepinephrine. It also degrades epinephrine, tyramine, and several other chemicals whose functions are poorly understood. MAOB degrades dopamine and other chemicals whose functions are similarly poorly understood. Three of the four FDA-approved MAO inhibitors, Parnate, Nardil and Marplan inhibit MAOA and MAOB equally. A fourth MAO inhibitor, Selegiline, inhibits MAOB preferentially at low doses, 10 mg or less, but inhibits MAOA and MAOB equally at higher doses. As a result, when patients take MAO inhibitors, numerous pathways are substantially altered by the increase in chemical messengers. A fundamental hypothesis in psychiatry is the monoamine hypothesis of mood disorders, which predicts the basis of depression, anxiety, and other mood disorders is simply depletion of the levels of serotonin, neuroepinephrine, and or dopamine in the brain. This may explain why MAO inhibitors are much more effective than medications like SSRIs and tricyclic antidepressants for most patients.